Um, so at last lesson we looked at finding the volume of an area that's rot rotated around either the x-axis or the y-axis. We gave you a formula for that. So if you're rotating around the x-axis, remember the formula is pi times the integral of y squared dx. Similarly, if you're rotating around the y-axis, it's x squared dy. dx or dy tells you what axis you're rotating around. We're looking now at finding um, like compound volumes. Sometimes we'll have to take volumes away from each other. Sometimes we'll have to add volumes together. It'll depend on the context of the question. Now remember back to single math. This something like this here. If you were asked to find this region enclosed by these two curves, you would integrate f of x between these limits a and b. You'd integrate g of x between these limits, and you'd take them away from each other to get that remaining area. Similarly, if you were trying to find the volume formed when this area is rotated around the x-axis, you'd work out the volume formed when f of x rotates around the x-axis, because that's the top line. You'd find the volume formed when g of x rotates, and then you take them away from each other, which is what it says here. In this case, because they're the same limits, you could combine these integrals together, and you could put the f of x squared and g of x squared together and do it all together. Sometimes you'll have to do separate volumes and stuff, depending on the question. Okay. Quite often in these questions, you'll get cylinders or um, cones. So if you rotated a horizontal line around the x-axis, you'd end up with a cylinder. And if you rotated a, any, um, like a straight line through the origin or whatever, around the x-axis, you'd end up with a cone. When you get shapes like that, either you can do it by integration or you can use the cylinder and cone formulae. You won't get given them, but you can use them. So if you end up with a cylinder, you use pi r squared h. If you end up with a cone, you use a third pi r squared h. But either integration or using that. Let's have a look at example one on here. So this gives us two graphs. So we've got y equals root two root x uh, and a quarter x squared. It says they intersect at the origin here and also at point A. And first off, it wants us to find the coordinates of point A. So you know how to find um, points of intersection of graphs. We're going to set these equal to each other. Fourth x squared is 2x. Uh, 2x, I'm going to write as 2x to the half. Now, to solve this one, uh, I am going to divide both sides through by um, x to the half. So subtract the powers on that, gives me x to the 3 over 2. And times it by that 4 gives me 8. Then I can get x on its own, so square both sides and cube root both sides. So 8 to the 2 thirds. Well, um, cube root of 8 to 2, square like 2, 4. In the, this question, this is fine. Um, there's not a problem with this. Uh, I need the coordinates of A, so I also need to work out Y. Uh, so Y, subbing it into either of those is also for... So I get the points of A for 4. Now, like I said, in this case, it's fine. But anyone spot anything a bit dodgy about what I've done? How many points of intersection were we expecting? Two. How many have I got? Why have I only got one? Because you divide by the x. Yeah, dividing by the root x, dividing by the x to the half has lost me a solution here. Now, it hasn't mattered for this question because I was only working out it and I have done that. Technically, what I should have done is at this stage, instead of cancelling out, I should have factorised out the x to the half. So I'm going to times through by four and bring everything across to the other side. This here. Technically, I should have factorised out the x to the half. This will give you x is zero solution, and this one gives you the solution that we got. But it's not a big deal for this one because we just find out. Okay, but just something to be aware of. Part B then says, the region enclosed by the two curves is rotated through four right angles around the x-axis. Remember, they word it weirdly sometimes, but four right angles just 360 degrees. This region in here enclosed between these curves, and it wants us to show that the volume is 9605. Um, we've got an autograph here just to show you what this volume will look like. 
So this is the volume, uh, this is the area in between these two curves. We'll rotate it around the x axis. Yeah. This. Usually this sort of bell shape falls with the bowl shape type of thing. So what we're gonna do what we're going to do is work out the volume that we get when we rotate the red graph around. So it's 2x. And then take away the volume that we get when we rotate the pink graph around, which is u quarter x squared. The limits that we're going to use are the points of intersection of these two graphs. So we've got x is 4 and x is 0. We're going to use as our limits. So we're going to take the top one away from the bottom one. Pi times the integral of 2 root x squared dx between 0 and 4. And then take away between the same limits, it's quad to pi x squared dx. So the volume of the um, 2 root x, take away the volume of quad x squared. Uh, Mr. Squared off on that one. We can put these two together into the same integral because they've got the same limits, both times by pi. So pi times the integral between 0 and 4 of, if I square this one, I get 4x. And squaring that one gives me 1 over 16x. Don't forget to do your integration, it's really easy to forget to do that. Uh, so pi times integrating that, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. 2x squared. This one, add 1 to the power divided by the new power. Gives you 1 over 18x. Sub the limits in. So I'm going to sub the 4 in. I don't have to show the 0. At least put a minus 0 on. But you don't have to show it all subbed in. Two times. Fine. Yeah, Gives us what they ask for. Yeah, That's fine to just type that in the calculator and let's show that question. Right, next one. I strongly suggest sketching these curves to see what's happening with this one. So this one says. Region is bounded by these two, uh, this curve, a straight line, and the x and y axes. So I'm going to draw this on the calculator. We'll copy it in and see what, um, which region it actually wants. Weird. So we'll draw it. We'll draw it. Yes. Here's one. Wow. So you can draw this on the calculator, and you can draw this, I've got it on autograph here. So we've got the curve x cubed plus 2, so just cubic graph um, translated up by 2, and you've got the straight line with negative gradient like that. Now, there's a couple of options for which region it could be asking us about, because there's not one that's like enclosed just by this graph. Um, it could have been this region in here, enclosed by the two curves and the y-axis, but notice the wording of the question said it's enclosed by the curve, the straight line, and the x and the y axis, which is this region in here. Okay, so you've got to be a little bit careful of that. Quite often they will give you a diagram, but not always. So sketch it on the calculator is helpful. Now this time we're not taking two volumes away from each other. This time we're going to add two different volumes together. So we've got these two areas here. One below the red graph below the cubic, one below the um, pink graph uh, the straight line. And to work out this total volume, we're going to add these two together. So I'm going to rotate this one in this sort of shape. And we're going to rotate this one as well. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so Sorry. There's a cone on top there, a little house, little arrowhead type thing. 
So at this time we're going to be adding these two volumes together. To work out our volumes we're going to need the point of intersection so we can use this as one of our limits. So let's start off. I'm going to put a quick sketch in here. And then we'll start working on this out. Uh, so cubic graph goes like this. Straight line goes like that. And the regions that we're rotating around are this one. And this one. I'll call those um, R1 and R2. So R1 and R2. R2 and R2. So we need to find some x values for our limits of integration. So for the green one, the lower limit is zero because it's just the y-axis. We need to find the point of intersection for our upper limit. So if we set these equal to each other, I've got a cubic in x, which we can solve in our calculator. Mm. One, no x squared term, be a little careful of that, that's the wrong one. So degree three, so there's no x squared terms. I've got one for my x cubed, zero x squared, two x and minus three. And that'll give me three solutions. Two of them are not real. I'm not interested in that one. But this is the one that we are interested in. So it only has one real solution, which is x equals one. I'm going to work out the y coordinate as well. 5 minus 2 times 1, it's the y coordinate of 3. Okay. Right, this, um, I'm also going to work out where the blue graph crosses the x-axis. So if I set y equal to 0 on this one, I get x is 2.5502. Right, this is enough information for me to start working out some volume. So let's work out volume 1 first. So when I rotate r1 around the x-axis, I'm going to get volume 1. This is pi times the integral of y squared dx between the limits of 0 and 1 we just worked. So this is pi times the integral between 0 and 1 of x cubed plus 2 square dx, remember to square that. You have to expand this one out to integrate it because it's not linear on the inside. Um, not too bad to do. So expand that one out and then we can integrate that. So 1 over 7x to 7. Uh, plus x to the 4 plus 4x. Show the substitution of the 1 at least. You can put minus 0, but do at least put something. Uh, and then work this out. So 5 plus 1 over 7. So that gives you 36 over 7. So that's the volume of the first one. First region rotates around the x-axis. For the second one, you can integrate it, like we've done all the rest of them, or you can do the volume of a cone. So I'm going to do volume of a cone for the second one. So V2 is a third pi r squared h, the volume of a cone. So if I rotate this triangle around, I'm going to get a cone. Um, for this cone, the radius is the y coordinate of the point of intersection, because that's what you're rotating around. So the radius is 3. The height is this length here, so between 1 and 2.5. Uh, so that's 1.5, 3 over 2. And then you can work this out so you get 9 over 2. Add those together for the total volume, so 36 over 7 pi plus 9 over 2 pi. Plus 
use something like that for the total volumes. So large set and fair modeled uh, with this equation here. So this is an, an ellipse. Um, we could work out where this is going to cross the x and y axis and stuff just by sticking in x is zero and y is zero. So if you work out the where this is going to cross the y axis is when x is zero. All right, so you get y squared equals k squared. And so it crosses at y is k and minus k, but I'm not really interested in that. Um, and you can work out where it's going to cross the x axis as well. When y is zero, you get k squared minus not but not one x squared equals zero uh, so you'll get 10k minus 10k yes just like a top down view no i'll let you what is it like a bottle so what you're thinking is um so th this is asking us to um Estimate the capacity temp by doing some volumes of revolution stuff. So you're thinking I'm going to rotate this whole thing around and end up with like an egg shape, which is not what I'm going to do because tents are not egg shaped. That's the um, what we're going to do is we're only going to take a part of this and rotate it around. So actually, I'm not going to do the bottom bit. I understand it now. Don't want that. I'm actually not even going to take this top left corner here. I'm only going to do this Because this tent I'm going to get, rotating this around the y-axis is going to give you a more tent shape. Isn't the, wouldn't it be the same temp shape? Same temp shape as what? So if you had the whole thing. So this one's a little bit... It's a little bit confusing as this one. So if you just took the top half, okay, so if we just took positive y, so if, you know, like if we rearrange this to make y the subject, you'd square root it. Come in, not. 1x squared. And if we didn't do the plus or minus, if we just took the plus, okay, that's the top half of it. Okay. The confusing thing is if you think about rotating this 360 degrees around the y axis, it feels like you should double over itself and you should get double the volume. But you don't actually. Um, you actually only really rotate in this top bit in the top right quadrant around. And you still, if you still do it 360, it still gives you the volume. So it is a bit confusing. What does it give you the same answer? Um, I don't think it does. No. Yes, it does. It does. Sorry. Yeah. It's just like if you if you over if you overthought it and you thought right, it looks it's, I'm rotating around to getting two volumes. Oh, <laughs> Are like, you saying? <laughs> so what do you think it should be like this? Um, <laughs> that's the x-axis, and this is the curve. I thought it would be like that. Rotating around the x-axis. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's got the pegs on it. <laughs> I think potentially, <laughs> guys. Shh, thank you. <laughs> potentially for this question, I think you could get away with rotating around the x-axis as well, and doing half of the volume of that. Um, I think the problem, mm, not half long. I think the problem will be that what you're actually doing is just this quarter, and if you start rotating this around the x-axis, that's <coughs> only half of the shape that you want. It's very confusing. Yeah. Just know that we're just taking this part of the curve. Yes, sure. Is the full circle? It's an ellipse. It's an oval. Wait, you... yeah, because if it was a circle, you could choose any. To yeah. You get the same Circle would rather equal. Ellipse it wouldn't be. Yeah, you get a different shape. Yeah. Depend on which axis you rotate around. How was it? Just keep on the wire. Oh, that's why I was confused. Okay, let's get back on track. So this one, um, first off, asks us to suggest a suitable value for k. Um, Important thing to note is that K is the height of this tent. Okay, so it depends how big you want your tent to be. Um, you could um, basically, I'd say anything bigger than like two meters is sensible. Um, I'm going to put 10 meters, which is enormous, but it's just for ease of 
calculation because I can't be bothered with any other number. But as long as you put something between two and ten, it'll be all right. Next bit. Thank you. The usual value of k to estimate the capacity of the tent. So we're going to rotate this around the y axis. So we're going to b equals pi times the integral of x squared dy this time. We're going to rotate around the y axis. Uh, x squared, so rearranging to make x squared the subject on this, so I get 0.01x squared is k squared minus y squared. I'm going to leave it as k and just sub it in at the end. So I can times up by that 0.0, uh, so times it by 100, so I'm uh, getting x squared is 100k squared minus 100 squared. And, um, sorry, it shouldn't have been those double brackets. Why I'm doing this between my uh, y values of zero and k. Let's do the integration. So 100k squared is just a constant. So that integrates to 100k squared. Y y squared add one to the power divided by the new power. Gives you y cubed. Between zero and k. Ashir, what's your question? I have not. Why have I not squared it? Yes, yeah, so the, the x squared was already in the question, so I just rearranged to make x squared the subject this time. It's a good question, that's a good point. All right, let's sub these in. So if I sub in k, I've got 100k cubed minus 100 over 3k cubed. That is a cubed minus 0. Gives me 200 over 3 pi k cubed. And if I sub in my k is 10, I can put whatever k value you have in. Uh, I'll get 200,000 over 3 pi. So I can do 10. Here's a massive 10. Circus 10. I'd lose the mark for what I've written there. Why? Cool. Yep, units. I'd lose the mark for units. Uh, I assume it's metres. Yeah, one metre. So it should be metres cubed at the end.